theory of practical theology, we're interested in a primary theological conviction, and that is that God is the primary agent, that we have skills and responses, but it's only when we understand that God is the primary agent that any of this can make sense. And that's what Paul's working with as he writes to the Ephesians. So practical theology at its center is this care about God's agency and faith, but faith in that understanding then is how do we discern what God's up to? How do we engage in kind of an action reflection response to God's initiatives? So our initiatives always encompassed in, created in the midst of God's initiatives. And it's when we move out of that, that we encounter challenges that um, basically end up with deviations. And so with practical theology as the lens, action reflection as faith, um, we then can look at Ephesians as a primary text that helps us understand just exactly how that's done, because that's what Paul is doing through the whole book. He has spent many years there, probably more than, as far as we can tell, in any other city. And now at a later time is in Rome, at the center of the empire, getting messages from the Ephesians and the others in that area, and responding, reflecting on what he's hearing. So that's what practical theology is. And so in this work, um, in my discipline, in my area, is to bring in all the different skills that are needed to do that kind of discernment. So it isn't just that we read texts and apply them. That'd be inadequate. We need to be aware of our own selves. We need to be aware of our context. We need to be aware of the people around us, the forces on them. And it's that that we bring into theological reflection. What is God doing? And as we start discerning what God's doing, how does that change what we see in ourselves? And it only works if we're willing to challenge our own assumptions. It's when our assumptions get locked in and that we're certain about what we know that we then quit paying attention to what God is doing. And so Paul is trying to help them gain new capacities for seeing what's going on around them, see what they've been doing, reflect on that theologically, and then engage some new practices. In my own um, life, uh, I spent 30 years in different kinds of church ministry, education, campus ministry, urban organizing, urban development. And it was after that that I came into teaching in the seminary world. And that's where this letter became incredibly alive to me. Let me tell you about a time in our church. This was in Oakland a number of years ago. And we were in the midst of quite a few different discussions, uh, questions. Uh, we were wondering about the environment we were living in, in that city, the economics, the jobs, race issues, family life, youth and kids. So as we lived and worked in that environment, all those questions were bubbling up for us at the church. We also had quite a few college grads, uh, graduate students from nearby university, and they were all asking personal questions around career vocation, work. Also, our church itself was asking, how do we organize ourselves? We've inherited particular structures of board and committees and chairs and things like that, and we were fairly convinced that wasn't the best way to organize our work. So we were asking questions around organizing and leadership. And it was in the midst of that that Ephesians started providing the reflection that we needed. We were developing a new practice at the church, and the practice was, rather than the preacher select texts to preach from and some kind of skipping around, we decided we'd take on whole books, engage a whole book, both Sunday mornings and during our weekday Bible study, and then move on to another book. And we'd go back and forth, Old Testament, New Testament. So we ended up spending three months, three or four months in the book of Ephesians. So it was while we were asking those questions that we were engaging this text. And so we were aware of our current activities and we were becoming aware of the activities around us in our context. And that's how we engaged this book. And so that new practice of action reflection is what was changing us because we would see something and then we would test it out. And then we would reflect some more. So Paul had spent time there. He'd left. He's getting more reports. He's reflecting back and he's encouraging new actions. That's the way he's working with this text, that's the way we wanted to work with this text. And so it all says, like practical theology does, be aware, be aware of your context, be aware of yourselves. Mm -hmm.